Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here in Denver. I'm going to tell you today about shift left observability. What is it? Why you should care about it? And hopefully you leave today thinking, you know, this is something that we should take a closer look at and maybe bring it into our organizations, maybe apply some of these principles to your own development process. But before I tell you about shift left observability, I'm going to tell you a little bit of background about me, only because it's relevant. I spent most of my professional career working on developer tools. I've been working on developer tools because I have been frustrated, first as a developer, with how hard it was to run my applications in the cloud. Started a company called Turum back in 2013, uh, doing things around, you know, I've got a containerized application, how can I run it? Things that today seem irrelevant. This was before the great days of uh, Kubernetes being everywhere and Docker was just getting started. This took me over to Docker. And in Docker is where I transitioned a little bit from building developers tools from, uh, for infrastructure to start thinking about, you know what? Developer tools for observability are also not that great. So at Docker, we were building relatively complex systems. Uh, I'm sure some of you may have heard about Docker Swarm. Um, unfortunately, Docker Swarm didn't fare so well against Kubernetes. So now it's a thing long, long gone. But when we were building that, our CI process was extremely complex. We would have to spin up hundreds of nodes, run all these complex tests. And what I found frustrating was that we were really good at debugging and fixing our production systems when something failed. But when something failed in CI, we would have developers on call to try and figure out what the heck happened. We would spend hours, if not days, trying to fetch the logs from dozens of machines to see what was the error that was thrown at the time that this test for this commit from this developer run. It was a nightmare. So this got me thinking, there's gotta be a better way to provide visibility to monitor this black box that is CICD, ultimately. And as Ilan mentioned, that's what uh, brought me to Datadog about a couple years ago. So what is Shift left. Shift left really is nothing more than, and I'll read here, the detection of application problems earlier in the software development process. I'll give you a couple minutes to read that SKCD strip. Or maybe not a couple minutes, maybe 20 seconds. Now I'm gonna not have you raise your hands. So raise your hands if you have never, never pushed or have to deal with a bug in production. Exactly. Right, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is really all that shift left uh, is about. Is how can we avoid shipping bugs, security issues um, into production by detecting them earlier in the software development lifecycle? No one wants to be in that situation, right? No one wants to pull out the uh, flamethrower and ignite their um, servers wherever they may be because they're not in the um, server room anymore. And why is it called shift left? Again, as I mentioned, um, we've got this notion of continuous integration, continuous delivery, deployment, uh, workflows that I'm sure all of you here are familiar with. Um, and there's many things that happen in the development uh, side of things and many things that happen in the operational side of things. Most of the observability we do today, uh, the monitoring, the checks happens in uh, the latter half of this diagram. What shift left aims to do and the, the principles guiding the shift left movement is how much of this stuff can we actually move further left to the development workflows? How can we enable developers to own more of these responsibilities such that we can capture these regressions, capture these bugs earlier, which means that it's going to be a lot cheaper. Who would then rather catch a bug in development as opposed to in production when hundreds of thousands of customers are being affected by it, right? In this notion of shift left, I'm sure you have heard of shift left testing. This is nothing more than, no, let's actually do the bulk of our testing early in the, in the development workflow, meaning not only your unit tests and the integration tests that may be part of your CI processes today, but also your end-to-end -end test your validation test, um, your uh, synthetic test. So 
can we shift some of these QA, traditionally QA processes that we were doing, maybe when an application hit production, can we move them early in the development workflow so we catch these issues early? Similarly, there's the notion of shift left security. Can we do our static analysis, container vulnerability scans, dependency scans, as part of the development workflow, instead of waiting until the application has been built and shipped to do these um, security scans? And today, as I mentioned, I'm here to talk about shift left observability. And this is something that you may not be as familiar with. It is not as um, trendy as the other two. It's something more of a novel concept, uh, per se. And shift left observability ultimately is also about detecting application problems earlier. It's about applying all the great tooling, all the know-how and best practices that we've been developing for decades in the monitoring and observability space for production and bringing it over to development such that we can make sense of what's actually happening in that black box that is CI CD. And the great thing about CI, sorry, shift left observability is that it not only allows us to detect application problems earlier, it's also going to shoot developer productivity and efficiency through the roof. We are all struggling to hire more and more developers, um, but we never stop to think, you know, if we give our developers a 2% increase in their uh, performance or efficiency, so if we cut down the time they have to sit idle waiting for those bills to run, or the number of bills that are failing, we're actually making them more productive, meaning we can hire developers within our existing development teams, have them work on new features instead of sitting waiting um, for their bills to finish or trying to spend hours trying to debug a, a test. So with shift left observability, we can also get uh, a reduced mean time to resolution in CI. We can also get an increased mean time between failures in CI. And we can reduce the lead time, the time it takes from commit to production. And there's a lot more things that you can do with it. Unfortunately, I'm only gonna be able to cover a few today. So let's jump right into it. The first one, how can we reduce mean time to resolution? This is a trace. I'm sure you are, have seen plenty of traces. Unlike the traces that you're familiar with, this trace is not from a transaction. This is not a trace that corresponds to an HTTP transaction from some server running uh, in, our, in our production system. The top parent span in this trace is actually an integration test. This is a JavaScript test that is running as part of our test suite in every CI uh, um, pipeline that we run for our teams. Now, as a developer, before this, when this test failed, all I saw was test failed and I got an error 500 from the service that I was talking to. If I wanted to fix this, I had to try and now reproduce this, meaning fetch that um, commit that I was um, trying to test here, spin up whatever dependencies I had, rerun this test, and then figure out what was actually happening. With this, I can actually see each and every span, each and every transaction that is associated to this specific test running for this specific commit at this instance in time, meaning because the test here is not actually not the culprit. If you can see uh, seven services down, there's, a, I think, an authentication API uh, that's throwing an error. I can go, this, go to this team and tell them, hey, I was running this test, and this is the error that I got. And they have everything at their disposal to be able to help me or I can help them fix this issue. We don't, no longer have to spend hours upon hours trying to reproduce this to fix it. This is one way that shift left observability can help you. Another way is to um, increase that mean time between failures. The biggest, talking to a lot of our customers, the biggest reason why builds failure, uh, fail is because of flakiness. That is, as a developer, I hit code, um, the, the build starts and it fails. I know my code didn't break anything, so I hit that retry button and I sit idle for five minutes maybe a couple hours, and the build passes, or maybe it fails again, and then I hit that retry button again because I know I didn't break anything. And then the third time or the fourth time, hey, it passes. It was just a flaky test. It was just a flaky job. 
really? 2022? Like, we're still dealing with this? So by applying observability methodology in today's, we can actually start looking into which tests are flaky, which commit introduce that flakiness. When did this test actually start flaking? That commit is likely to be the culprit behind this flakiness. How flaky is this test? Does it flake once in every thousand executions or every third time it runs? How long is this test? Is this a test that takes 20 minutes to run or two seconds? Because then if I tell you, you know, you've got 2,000 flaky tests in your code base, you're like, well, I don't know what to do with that. Well, take a step at the first 10, you know, the ones that are the longest and the most flaky, and that's gonna yield great returns already. So that's what we have started doing internally as we dog food some of these problems. And same with our customers, they're like, okay, well, you know, we're not gonna fix all of our flaky tests, but we can, we can fix a few, and then next sprint, let's fix another few. Um, so that's how SIP left observability can help you increase the mean time between failures so that your uh, development branches and your uh, default branches are always green. And then you can reduce the lead time. What's taking so long? Developers always complain, CI is slow. CI is slow, help me. And the platform teams are like, oh, right. well, we've got plenty of infrastructure. We keep throwing CPU and memory at this host and uh, they're running fine. Well, if you actually start monitoring these things, if you look into you know, which stage is slow, is it the test, the linked, deploy, the pre-build, the build, the containerize, like what is actually taking long and why is it taking long and when did it change? Did it start taking long, was it a week ago that it became sluggish or has it just recently been? So here you can see there's a big jump Saturday uh, on the weekend where um, some of the actual stages don't run. And this may be on purpose, so it actually validates, right? You know what, on weekends we don't do deployments. So you can come back here and see that the deployment stage in your pipelines is not running on the weekends. And you get that reassurance, like, wow, that's working as expected, that's great. And that the test stage, maybe you're running more tests on the weekends, which is why it's taking long. So by monitoring, by applying observability principles earlier in the development process, we can improve how our teams work and give them that edge um, to be able to ship better software. But as I said, this is just scratching the surface. There's a lot more that you can do by applying observability principles to the development workflow. You can start monitoring queue time. It's been like, you know, do we, do we have good queue time? Queue time that we'll never be able to do without because this is as much as we can parallelize things? Or do we have queue time that we could do without? You can start measuring that. You can start looking at your timing information, stages, jobs, what's taking the longest, where do you have some regressions. Uh, test performance, um, benchmark test performance. Um, say that you have a test that today takes five seconds. I do a commit and now it takes two minutes. The test still passes. I'm willing to bet that that will go through CI without any alerts. Now that five seconds to two minute regression may be something I changed in the SQL query. That's going to land in production. And that regression is likely to impact customers. So can we monitor our test earlier and see that, you know, there's an outlier, that test passed, but it's taking 20 times longer than it did in the previous commit. Let's look into it. Let's actually block this deployment. Similarly, you can look at, you know, what are our common error types? Are our tests failing for the same reasons or is this um, different reasons? The same way we do error tracking in production. And lastly, you can look um, into the different, uh, what are your slowest tests, if you want to improve some of the timing or uh, lead time, and so on. Lots and lots that you can do by applying SIFT left observability into your everyday workflows. If you want to learn more or discuss, we do have an open space at 11.15 today. I'll be there. Please join us. And if you'd like to see a demo of our CI visibility product and how it can help you apply some of these SIFT left observability principles to you and your teams, um, come by the booth and see a demo. Thank you so much.